The ATA is a proud ally of Better Medic Air Alliance, and I personally am a proud ally and friend of Mary Beth, and so excited that she's assumed leadership in this organization. The ATA, or the American Telemedicine Association, has been around for over 25 years, and more recently represents a range of entities, including delivery systems, academic medical centers, payers, and solution providers, all of whom rally around the idea that people should get care where and when they need it, and that when they do, they know it's safe, effective, and appropriate while enabling clinicians to do more good for more people. Under Mary Beth's leadership, and previously the Better Medicare Alliance has shown enormous leadership in advocating for Medicare Advantage beneficiaries, and really supporting telehealth. So we're very aligned in that regard. And again, very excited to be an ally. Medicare Advantage is extremely important to the ATA for a few reasons. Number one, more than a third of Medicare beneficiaries or over 27 million Americans are enrolled in Medicare Advantage. So it's a significant population. Secondly, there have been many roadblocks to the dissemination of virtual care that's been embedded in Medicare Part B law, and they do not apply to Medicare Advantage. So we really see Medicare Advantage as being a leader in the utilization of telehealth, which has been incredibly positive, both from the research that Better Medicare Alliance has conducted, as we've seen, as well as other research studies showing that Medicare Advantage enrollees not only used virtual services, but they actually liked them and will seek them out going forward. The future of Medicare is really important because we know there's no going back to the way things were before the pandemic. And we know that telehealth is here to stay. So like the rest of the US healthcare system, the future of Medicare is one in which all beneficiaries have access to care where and when they need it throughout the continuum of the care. We know going forward that there are really several things that we have to focus on and that we'll be working closely with the Medicare Alliance on as well. The first is ensuring that telehealth is not a pandemic only tool. And by that, we mean that we have to advocate for making sure that some of the waivers or the flexibilities that we've enjoyed in the last 18 to 20 months remain permanent. The idea, for example, of using audio only for risk adjustment for Medicare Advantage is clearly within that um, goal of ours. The second focus we have is driving what hybrid looks like, operationalizing virtual care, recognizing that it's not for everyone or for everything. And so we really expect to see continued development of use cases and continued playbooks and frameworks around what this means, especially for Medicare. And then finally, we really believe that we had problems pre-pandemic with access to care the ability of people in different communities, rural communities, inner cities, communities of color, tribal nations, they were all challenged by access to effective and appropriate care. You cannot solve for access without telehealth. And so we really think we have an opportunity and an obligation to use telehealth to address the inequities and the disparities that we've seen. And we know that this is going to be beneficial for all populations, especially for Medicare enrollees. Mm -hmm.